The Brandon Peters Show may contain explicit language and detailed plot points. For more information on the show, stay tuned to the end of the episode. Here's Brandon. Welcome to Old Space Show. I'm Brandon, and this is my, my, my companion, Russell McKee. <laughs> this series of Old Space Show follows the semi-fantastic adventures of Galen and his two astronaut pals as they wade their way through the futuristic Earth in the short-lived television version of Planet of the Apes. Today. We discussed the eighth episode, The Deception. Galen and Alan and Peter befriend a chimpanzee named Fauna, the blind daughter of a human friendly ape who was killed by the band of vigilante apes known as the Dragoons. Unaware that Burke is human, Fauna falls in love with him. As Galen and Verdon hunt down the Dragoons, only to discover that Fauna's uncle, is one of them. Mm, this is directed by Don McDougal and written by Anthony Lawrence, starring Roddy McDowell, Ron Harper, James Naughton, Jane Ackman, Pat Ranella, and John Milford. Um, the cast and stuff, it's just a lot of TV people with all those TV shows we always name. Um, can't pinpoint <laughs> where they're from. Um, that's who's that's who's in this. Um, this one's got some more production value to it. We got they go back to the beach uh, for this a bit. Um, but this one, uh, a social commentary episode, Russell. Very much a social commentary episode. We were we were talking about this a little bit before we started recording, and just thinking back to the time, and I was saying to Brandon that we can't just overlook it from the standpoint that this is 1974. So mm -hmm. we're, we're dealing with a lot of the social rights as far as with racial issues and everything. Right. And this episode is a big commentary on just mm -hmm. that and what's going on in the world, which it had to have been a risk at the time. Yeah, a bit. I mean, cause it is on the nose with stuff. Like it's not hiding. No. Anything it's about the KKK, all, like that's what the Dragoon are in this. Mm -hmm. They've got they've got hoods. Mm -hmm. They ride around on horses. They burn houses. Like they just go after. They make up bullshit. Um, any reason to be that way? Secret council. Uh, yeah. G Galen uh want, finds his way into deceiving and getting Infiltrating. initiated. Infiltrates them. Uh, there's. Yeah, it's kind of weird. There's there's some like stuff that would become like stereotypes later and stuff like that that I don't think they would have been borrowing from at this time. But there's like the blind ape that can't see and they trick around, um, and because she falls in love with Peter because he has um lots he knows a lot of he's, he's up on his literature so that's really attractive to her and reminds her of a boy she liked. Yeah, and she's very well read and enjoys that. Um, so that's something that they're able to connect on um, because she's a very literate ape. Yeah, and then I mean, there's a plot device in here too. We started a funeral of this blind girl ape's father uh, with her uncle, who just hey, I hate humans. Ah, oh. and there's the the story that he entrusted humans, and then the humans turned on him and killed him. Which the whole time you're like. Uh, but it wasn't a human that killed them. Yeah. But that's okay. That's the point of the story. And this is probably an early story where you might not have thought that or that you might have been like, you know what? They're just trying to prove that not all humans are those killer people type thing. Um, there's a lot of good uh, stuff here with that mystery, trying to find out um, creepiness, uh, some suspense with... Um, not knowing how these, we know our heroes are going to go anywhere, but just how how far are they going to push this um, story with these characters? 
there's even a whole deception uh, with the blind girl, not just what our heroes unintentionally do with her, mm-hmm. but there's a subplot where like the reason that she hates humans is she's been told by her uncle that they're evil. And that story, as far as that they killed um, her father, etc. So yeah. 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 It's, it's generational um, apism, racism. I <laughs> don't know what to do, but yeah, that it's passed through. Um, and it's, it starts with, I mean, Galen, Peter and Alan are, again, we don't have to have any sort of like introductions. We're kind of thrown in the middle of something has already happened because they're staying in a house with another human that they've found, uh, living on the outskirts who is then just for being there harassed and hunted down. Does he die or is he just fatally injured? They burn his house and where they're staying at and. They, I think he's it. dead in the road um, because the uh, apes come and just do a lot of damage to him with the hoods. That's a very uh, so- sober moment there. Yeah. Um, dead in the road. Yeah, and as they burn his house down, they just go, let this be a lesson to all yeah. humans. No, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's uh, just... The, the imagery is not holding back. And this is like probably playing at like seven o'clock or eight o'clock on TV for all to see um, at a time where, I mean, we're out of the height of the civil rights movement in the sixties and stuff, but it's still there. And I'm sure the Southern States didn't budge as much as national news was going to say. Um, so this probably hits home like a lot. Um, Agreed. Uh, with things. And just, I mean, even the, them with the the sacks over their heads, creepy imagery. I was like, dang, that's, that's some crazy stuff here. Um, and and the fact that I I wonder too, costume design wise, they didn't do white hoods, but were they associating like, well, white people wear the white robes and white hoods, so if the apes are brown, they should wear brown, you know, the brown fur. They should right. wear something that matches their fur to represent that was that the was that the idea behind the costume design i'm just kind of wondering with that too it's an interesting thing to think about because like we a lot of the time we haven't talked about what's going on as far as production design but that there definitely seems to have been mm-hmm. some thought behind like what it actually visually represented here mm-hmm. yeah and it's amazing that like well, I'm sure, you know, this is TV at the time. They're like, you know what, do this, do this or whatever. But like, there was a time where this is in the initial shoot of episodes. So this wasn't just in the heat of everything. This was like, hey, this is, we're pushing this. And someone could have ixnate something like this. And this is in the 60s. I don't know if this episode gets made. Yeah. Yeah. God. No. And the other thing that like was interesting to me is Dragoon, the KKK was actually a bigger threat to the local authorities and like they were trying and have been Mm -hmm. before our heroes even get there trying to actually find them and deal with this um group of people or Mm -hmm. group of apes yeah um yeah so they i mean they infiltrate the apes with this girl and then uh she takes them shares with them a secret cavern she has Mm -hmm. where she used to hang with her friend or this boy that she loves or loved back in the day. Um, and that's, that's where she wants to touch Peter's face and Galen jumps in to touch her, his face instead. Um, but yeah, it's and like, that's well, where they unintentionally end up deceiving her mm-hmm. by using Galen so she can feel his face. Yeah. And Galen, I mean, this, this is two episodes in a row where he has just, shown his value and what he can do to help in natural situations or um by being incognito pleading for help from a friend convincing of a case like he's becoming a much stronger character than he was just like yeah he's the ape pal to these guys you know and sometimes he's gonna have to talk to another ape to stand in like it's it's much more valuable here in these previous two episodes right with the way he's been able to and there there was some crack me up when um He's in a carriage with the uncle, I believe, when he's trying to infiltrate. And he and Roddy McDowell's is like, oh, yeah. oh, those darn humans. It's like and he starts <laughs> building up. And it's totally, almost yeah. 
comedic because while he's selling it to him, you sit and go, my God, this is ridiculous. And then you're like, but this is what these people think. And that's that guy's taking it as, yeah, man. It's like, sounds so stupid. I'm like, yeah, but that's how it would be. I mean, if you've seen like movies like Spike Lee's Black Klansman, that's the type of stuff. Like this is kind of um, in a way like something like that infiltrating KKK things, uh, but this with apes and you see like the, you know, ridiculous things said that they, these guys eat up. We're like, ah, yeah. It's like, what? People really buy? Right. Oh, disgusting. But yeah, that's what happens. Um, yeah. But- and, and once Galen actually proves himself to the group, as far as his initiation, mm-hmm. like the final thing, as far as testing him, they are going to have him kill a human, correct? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they have the whole group come and then things get outed. The high council, um, they have torches, sacked heads. Um, it's creepy um, to do that. Um, then once the true killer, the uh, the father or whatever is revealed, like they're all like, eh, and they back off and they go. But I don't think it ends their group. They're just disappointed in the one member. I don't, I don't know. The, the thing that I got there Maybe one like, ape learned today, and that's all that really needs to learn, you know? It was one at a time. The thing there was that, like, when we get there to that, that um, denouement is that the, the, they are surprised to learn that he actually killed a fellow ape. Mm-hmm. And that, that, again, like, it's yeah. a big thing in ape society. So, ape shall not kill ape. Right, right. So, like, again, I think that, like, it completely kills the Dragoon as a result of that. I mean, we don't see that, but, right. like, they they definitely are looking poorly on this guy once they learn that their leader did that and killed uh, the the little girl's uh, father. Right. Right. Yeah. Um in the, in the middle of all this, I forget, we do have a, a Alan and a gorilla fight in the woods. And it's like yeah. a judo type fight where it's like a ha! like a lot of throwing over the shoulder type type thing. It's pretty interesting little little scuffle they have there. Yeah, and they also end up like having to convince um, the establishment that they are like in the right and they can help as far as with the dragoon problem. And that's something at first he's reluctant because like they've also been after them forever. Right. Yeah. So, um, and at, it wasn't until don't they end up Galen because like they end up going there and then get getting caught. Mm-hmm. And Gail, and so that wasn't the plan. So that everything goes a little sideways in the middle there. Right. Yeah. And there there is a fun part. I believe is it Galen? He walks somewhere and one of the apes is like, or like, who is it? Or no, he's like, I'm wearing a mask. Why would I tell you? <laughs> it was great. Oh, like. That's great. That's great. Um, aside from the plot and the characters and everything, I did know this one had some really good coastal coverage and scenes out in yeah. some interesting places that were shot really well and some good uh, sets that, that kind of stuck with me and some uh, just framing uh, of things, the way they set the characters and everything looked a little bit more thought out than most of these episodes. It was actually pretty effective. And when Brandon mentioned the beach earlier, it's not just a normal beach. It was like down in a cove, like this rocky cove that they found. So yeah, it was a yeah. Really cool location. Right. Yeah. They they had a good scout for this and they made do with it. And I think, you know, the lighting in this is really good too. And the cameras, are, like, it's an effective, moody little episode and definitely works with what they're doing. Like, it was a, it was in a, like a back to back. It looks to be figuring things out very well. And this is another example. I mean, of taking well this one isn't so much taking um this isn't so much taking you know common tropes with shows and making a plan apes this is like societal commentary and mm-hmm. turning it in and playing it in the ape world which is another brilliant move to do with a show like this this is hardcore core sci-fi as far as social yeah, this, commentary yeah this is what sci-fi does best and in bringing yeah. it to the plan of the apes is is great i can't think of any other sci-fi show tackling kkk racism i mean there, there's you know star trek with the famous frank gorshin episode stuff like that but 
hardcore tackling the ugliness side of the KKK and the brutal truth of like what they, you know, their cross burnings and things like that right up front, like here and throwing it on the humans of all but things. Yeah. The other thing though, and like, we can't forget this is the reason it also works. Brandon is again, it's that emotional heart as far as like with the daughter Mm -hmm. with everything and coming back to that and having that emotional reversal at the end that's what really like pulls everything together right right yeah and and then the sadness is her is like you watch it she says all the things she she lives that life but you like know that she knows better and you know she's being groomed and manipulated to buy into this as a and it and for her to have to change to be enlightened it'll still take forever and a long time because that's all she's grown up to know, you know, just because she finds out, Oh, my father was killed by an ape. She's still rooted in a lot of uh, racist ideals and a lot of stuff. And that's deep programming that will haunt her forever. And that's kind of the sad part of her, you know, blind blindness. Uh, well, not the blindness, but her character, the blind girl. There, there was a, a sweet little moment where she says something to the effect of, I can't believe I fell in love with a human at the very tail end. Mm-hmm. And then she's kissed by the her love interest as far as Peter. Yeah. Love, yeah. Peter. Yeah. Um, and that's a nice, sweet little moment that they have there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, the, 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 ultimately, the story has a good re- resolution, but you don't feel like great after it. You know, you don't feel like, oh, yeah, it's all good now. After this episode, you still feel like we need to have a conversation after this episode. Or, you know, like, you know, we need to. Yeah, it's like you said, when sci fi is at its best, this is where this is what it's doing. You know. Yeah, it's not it's not the um, what weekly special as far as you coming home as far as after school. and like, Right. <laughs> it's not over the head. In that it's way. not tonight on a very special Planet of the Apes. Right. <laughs> yeah i mean the this the uh, on the nose stuff isn't in the message it's in the depiction of events that aren't masked so much you know it's not like oh Uh, you know when he did this it was actually it's a reference to this it's it's that like that you know there's no way around it there's there's no it's it's not abstract it's not ambiguous it's we just all we did was change it to ape costumes. That's it. You know, it's where that's how they present it. So yeah. But no, another banger. This was a this was good stuff. Um uh, but uh it's come time to take our stinking paws off this damn dirty episode. Russell, thank you as always. Uh thank you, good, sir. Until next time, uh, where can people keep up with you? Again, uh, you can find me at indianapublicmedia.org where I work with my day job with WTIU and WFIU or, again, because we're here for Mm -hmm. sci-fi, check out Big Finish Productions because I work on uh, Doctor Who audio adventures specifically with the Gallifrey series and you can check those audio stories there at bigfinishproductions.com. All right, cool. Hashtag monkey no see, monkey no do. I see what you did there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Braden 4 kst written worker, why so blue? Hope you're enjoying summer of 82 at 40. Um, just sneak another great week. Um, and the music video episode will be Friday and pretty awesome stuff. So uh there's more from the show, of course, this week, but until then, or uh, from old space. It's a madhouse! Thank you for listening. The Brandon Peters Show is a Creative Zombie Studios production. Produced by Brad Shoemaker and Brandon Peters. Written and edited by Brandon Peters. Announcer vocals by Jessica Olsman. Theme song by Metavari. Web design and show art by Brad Shoemaker with Brandon Peters. All music and clips featured in the episode are property of their respective studios and no infringement is intended. Additional information on this and other episodes at brandonpetershow.com. For any inquiries, press opportunities, or sponsorship, contact mail at brandonpetershow.com. The show is available on Apple Music, Spotify, or anywhere podcasts are found.